Hi, my name is John Muldowney. I'm the head of the Agricultural Environment and Structures Division here in the Department of Agriculture, and I'm going to give you a broad overview of the Agriculture Agri-Climate Rural Environment Scheme. Um, colleagues will follow me providing information in terms of, I suppose, the general elements of acres and farmer case studies, uh, general elements of the cooperative scheme and case studies, uh, an overview of the results-based payments and uh, the terms, scheme terms, terms and conditions. Um, the session will also be followed by a, a question and answer session. Um, you'll be able to engage with that through the question and answer function on the webinar. Uh, we'll do our best to answer as many questions and any that we don't answer will follow up afterwards or we'll try and follow up on as many as possible. Okay, so we'll make a start here. So in terms of the ACRE scheme, ACRES is one of the flagship schemes within the CAP strategic plan. Uh, the CAP strategic plan starts on the 1st of January 2023, so a lot of work has been happening over the last two or three years in its development. Uh, the draft CAP strategic plan was submitted to, to the Commission on the 31st of December 2021, and there has been intensive consultation with the Commission until July of this year. Following uh, some clarifications and amendments suggested by the Commission, there was a resubmission of the plan on the 11th of August, and the Commission reverted to us to give the green light to our CAP strategic plan on the 31st of August this year. So we're delighted with the progress on that. However, there remains a, a strategic environment assessment and appropriate assessment are still being finalized. These documents are ongoing in parallel to it. So information presented in the presentations uh, in this webinar may be subject to some slight change. In terms of the payment rates, I highlighted that ACRES is a flagship scheme. So there is a very significant budget available for ACRES. It's 1.5 billion that's available over the next five years. That's a significant increase on what was previously available for GLOSS. In terms of its structure, um, the general element of ACRES, we have a target of 30,000 farmers with an average payment of 5,000 euro and up to a maximum of 7,300 per farmer. Uh, the cooperation element, which is in the eight cooperation zones, targets 20,000 farmers with an average payment of about 7,000 euro, rising to a max of about 10,500. Um, in terms of acres, I guess overall Ireland has a good story to tell in terms of the environment. Um, our clean green environment underpins exports from the country. So, you know, it's very impressive that we are looking after these. And farmers are doing a lot to try and look after the environment in terms of water quality, biodiversity, and the general landscape in place. So like, it's a good starting point that we're at, but there's still a lot of work to do in this space. So in terms of the in strategic environment assessment, it identified um, environmental challenges within Ireland, and primarily the drivers of the challenges are increasing numbers, livestock numbers in recent years, although that can be spatially it can be different regionally, different across the country. Uh, fertilizer sales trends are increasing also. And in particular then, the rise in numbers and fertilizer trends are driving, I suppose, some re land reclamation as well that can be um, an environmental challenge. And overall, the impacts that agriculture then can be having on the environment is in relation to rising greenhouse gas, gas emissions, rising ammonia emissions, decreasing biodiversity and decreasing water quality, and there's a question mark then on soil health. So ACRES is designed to try and respond to these challenges to help ensure that Ireland is responding to these environmental uh, criteria, and also that this is helping to underpin the green credentials of uh, our marketing exports from the country. So it's, it's very useful that we have this scheme in place. In terms of what has been achieved to date, well, we've had agro-environmental schemes in place, I guess, since the early to mid 90s and a lot of work has been achieved on those. Uh, every scheme has been of its own time in terms of what it's doing and everyone sort of recalls the, the REP scheme, but we've had a lot of work since then too. And in the, the most recent version of GLOSS, I have some stats here. Again, um, there's a lot of information there, but like some of the highlights of GLOSS in terms of what it has achieved and farmers have been key to delivering on this. Um, have been that there's been over 4,000 kilometers of hedges planted. There's about 14,500 kilometers of a watercourse fenced. 
Um, in terms of low input permanent pasture, we've had two, uh, more than 250,000 hectares of low input permanent pasture, again, protecting biodiversity and providing space for biodiversity on farms. Uh, traditional hay meadows, again, over 60,000 hectares. Uh, catch crops in, in uh, arable catchments, trying to soak up, reduce the loss of no nitrates, water, water courses, about 21,000 hectares, and 18,000 hectares of wild bird, bird cover. And again, that has been seen to be very useful in trying to recover farmland bird species in terms of their diversity across the landscape. And then in commonage areas, there's about 228,000 hectares of commonage were committed to the GLOSS scheme. Um, also, in parallel to GLOSS, there's been various EIP projects, European Innovation uh, Platform projects that have been available over the last number of years that have been trialing results-based payments. And we've been taking a lot of learnings from those over the last number of years together with the REAP pilot scheme. Um, again, some, some of you will recognize the names there in terms of the Hen Harrier, the Freshwater Pearl Mussel have been two of the big, bigger projects. The Burn was also another scheme there that had results-based schemes in place. So these have been all well received and the current new acres um, scheme is trying to take as many learnings from the previous loss and these EIPs and the reef pilot in terms of to drive on progress moving forward. The reef pilot was also very important in terms of training up farm advisors and there's been over 400 farm advisors trained in how to do results-based scoring on farmland. So this is very significant and a very important resource in terms of trying to deliver the new acres scheme. Again, these are just some of the, I suppose, the logos that would have been associated there in terms of the REAP plant identification key made available to farm planners to help with that results-based scoring, the GLOSS scheme, and then the EIP agriculture. The key features of the overall acres approach, and again, colleagues will cover this in more detail later on, uh, it's one scheme with two specific measures within it. The general measure, as I say, targeted at 30,000 farmers, and then the cooperative measure, which will have the expertise of cooperative teams helping to deliver them, targeted at 20,000 farmers. An eligible farmer in any part of the country may apply to participate in the scheme, including the submission of a farm sustainability plan. This plan will set out the actions to be undertaken by each individual farmer. Intake will be on a phase basis via tranches, again, similar to the GLOSS approach that was there for both measures, subject to DAFM and advisor capacity. So the target for tranche one is that it's presently open into the Q4 of 2022, and farms that are accepted in that will have a start date of the 1st of January 2023, and tranche two then will commence during a similar period of this time next year in 2023. And depending on the demand, there may be a possibility of a third tranche as well. There's tiered entry system based on a ranking and selection if we're oversubscribed. Um, in terms of the key features of ACRES, uh, overall, I guess the, the key features are this scheme is more environmentally ambitious and more targeted and more innovative than ever before. As I say, it's taken a lot of learnings from the various EIP projects, whether that's the burn or other EIP projects that are out there in terms of results-based scoring. There's a broader range of actions. There's in excess of 30 actions available to farmers. So we feel that there's a set of options or actions that are suitable to all farm systems that are out there to encourage farmers to look after biodiversity and protect water quality in particular. And again, colleagues will go through examples of selections of actions that could be undertaken. In acres, there is a move away from species-specific focus to habitat establishment and enhancement. So what I mean by that is in the gloss, there were some actions that were very specifically targeted at the likes of uh, chuff species or twite, for example. They had very low uptake. So we've tried to move away from the, some of those that were very niche actions to tr trying to focus on habitat establishment and the enhancement of the quality of the habitat. And this is where the results-based payments come into. There's the underpinning of the principle of the right action in the right place. So we've done a lot to develop our IT systems in terms of mapping the right action in the right place and using all available environmental data resources to try and make sure farm advisors are aware of water quality pressures or biodiversity pressures that are in a space to try and target the right action in the right place. There's a delineation of eight CP core areas to identify lands of high environmental priority 
and the management in those areas will be assisted by these cooperation teams that are in place now preparing local action plans. There's a movement away from prescription-based schemes to a hybrid scheme where there's a combination of prescription-based schemes and results-based measures. This means that rather than having an action like low input permanent pasture where there's a very fixed set of actions that you can't exceed fertilizer levels or stocking levels or certain mowing dates. This one is based on this results-based scorecard where depending on the quality of the habitat, you get a payment according to that. So we feel that that would be very useful. And then there's the introduction of a farm sustainability plan that tries to bring everything together in this right. Then in relation, I guess, just uh, quick note on the results-based approach, which will be covered in more detail later on. It's based on a scale of one to 10. And its objective is to try and rate the quality of the habitat that's in place in terms of one to 10. And payment level then is re related to the score. So a 10 out of 10 gets the highest payment possible. And as you move down the scale, payment levels are reduced. Uh, overall, this helps to assess the ecological integrity of habitats the hydrological integrity of habitats, and it allows flexibility to farm in local levels rather than the very prescriptive uh, actions that were in place in GLOSS all the time. Um, I suppose I'm coming to the end of my presentation now, and as I say, other colleagues will um, cover more of this in, in detail, but the key dates to just to, as a farmer to be paying attention of are, since June, there is an access agreement available that allows advisors to access your data in terms of drawing up these farm plans, and that's on the system since June 2022. It also allows to direct you as to which type of farm acre scheme you're, you're entering through, whether that's the cooperative area or the general stream. Um, from August there and September that we're in now, the farm sustainability plan, uh, those screens are available to farm advisors in terms of drawing up farm plans at the moment. Then in late November, the closing date for the scheme will happen in terms of the submission of the farm plans that are developed must be done by mid-November. And then by January, uh, we'll have issued the approvals and commencement contracts for farmers that are accepted into the scheme, as I say, for the 1st of January, 2023. But if there's any further questions you have on this, it's go to gov.ie forward slash acres in terms of that. And as I say, there will be question and answer session at the end that has a that you can put post questions to have them respond to in that q a session thank you